advise you to have um, a brush with a half decent point on it because we're going to be drawing with the brush um, in the first instance. So I'm just using um, a round brush here. This one's just a number six, but it's got a reasonable point on it. I might drop to a, a bit more pointy one later if I struggle with this one, but I'll start off here with this one. Um, so as I said, we're going to do the little figure with the backpack on to start off with and play around with his shadow kind of coming off him. We'll do a couple of tries at that one. Then maybe we'll try a couple of the smaller figures. So I'm going to try and do it all on this one piece of paper. So leave yourself room if you can to fit them all in. Then once we've done that, we'll then play around with a few building washes and then we'll try and tie the whole thing together. So color wise, um, really colors, the color doesn't matter. Um, you can pick any color out of your palette, but it needs to be very, very thin. Okay, so I've just got a bit of mucky palette color there. It's not really any particular color. It's a bit of brown, a bit of blue. It's even got a bit of red in there. It's just gone kind of gray. And I'm just putting lots of water in it. So it's really nice and thin. So as you can see there, you can pretty much almost see the palette right the way through, completely white. So I'm gonna take a bit of that color and I'm gonna use that to draw with. <clears throat> so starting off with the, and I'm just gonna put a few marks just to give me a guide as to where um, this little figure is gonna come in. So here's gonna be the top of his head. Let's go a bit darker, but you're not gonna be able to see that. You might want to go really, really thin, but I'm going to go a bit darker just so you can actually see it on camera, otherwise it's not going to show up. The thinner you go, the easier it is to kind of um, correct your mistakes. So if you want to keep it fairly thin, uh, i.e. more water in it, then um, please do so. And then it's easier for you to <clears throat> edit it as you're kind of going along. So I'm just making a few marks as to where I want this figure to come. So I'm looking down to see where his foot is. And a good eye and a good guesstimate for um, the length of the body is if the waist, top of the head to the waist, i.e. the bottom of the jacket, is about that long, then that same distance will come to the feet. Okay, so it's about halfway. Not always exactly like that, but it's a good guess um, to have the top of the head to the waist and the leg length about the same. So let's come out in the body here as it comes back into his head, which is gonna be in there somewhere. And I'm really just looking for the shape of this figure. The leg kind of comes down, all the way down. And then you get this sort of triangle shape at the bottom, which is gonna be his foot. Halfway up his leg is gonna be his knee for the other leg. And if you look, it makes this little um, sort of triangle shape between the legs and then we get the other foot coming off of that and then the leg kind of comes up and back and then it goes out to his hips and then we've got the backpack coming all the way up so very simple um, this is his hoodie top of the hat and then comes out and then back down okay so really simple. So I'm just gonna fill that shape in now. And again, just picking up any old color really. And I'm gonna fill it in as a silhouette. Okay, so really, really simple. Not worrying about any internal shapes. So no arms, no, um, don't need to worry about any sort of interior shapes within the, even the legs, you can join those up. I'm not going to keep those separate. The foot, I mean, you can keep that fairly simple. And the other foot, I'll keep that pretty simple as well. And here's the bit we need to concentrate on is to link all of this into the shadow. So the shadow comes off of this foot and it's going to go at an angle because the light is coming from this direction. So the shadow is actually going to be going um, away from us, sorry, away from the figure over to the left here. So I'm going to start to get that shadow shape coming out and across. And you're going to elongate it. So it's going to be a little bit of length to it. Bring it out a bit more. But what you want is you want the two connected. So you don't want 
there to be a hard line between <clears throat> or a line rather between um where one stops i.e the figure silhouette and the um and the shadow it's all one entity so then that curves round as we go into the backpack and then we can just take that away and then out of the picture so really really simple I'm just going to soften a few of these edges. Now, generally speaking, shadows as they get further away from the actual point at which they start, the edges become more diffused. So here, nearer the, um, the figure itself, you'll find that the edges are pretty fairly sharp because it's a lot, lot closer to the object that's casting the shadow. But as we get further and further away, the edges get softer. So you can play around with that as a kind of a, a little um, bit of interest. Okay, so that's one. So let's try another one because we need to do these as a warm up. So this one I'm gonna do um, just next to him and we'll just have the shadow going in the same direction, same figure. So it's a good idea to try and warm up if you're going to do figures to have a little bit of a go at them first of all because um you just need to get your eye in and kind of look at the shapes a little bit more carefully um, and they tend to get well hopefully they should get a little bit better every time you do one we've got a foot down there and then we've got a leg kind of in here. There's the other foot, body, and then the backpack and the hood. Okay. And then let's fill this one in with a slightly different color. So let's put some more red in there, just as a change. And we're just going to silhouette that again. Really simple. Coming all the way down. And I'm gonna do a little bit of a color change here. So I'm gonna put some more blue in it. Let's go with some cerulean. Just to make it a bit more interesting. So coming down to the leg, foot, the other foot and then our shadow coming off of the body and then going over to this side oh, that one's gone a bit steep never mind we'll just link them up didn't quite mean to go quite as steep as that but hey ho so then the other leg comes off and because this foot is off the ground the shadow doesn't actually join. Whereas this one, because it's on the ground, they, um, the shadow will join up with the, um, the object that's casting it. So again, we'll come across and then we start to fade it out as we come into the distance. And even if we want, we can actually start to blur that out even more. So it becomes less obvious and much, much softer. Just adding a bit of water there. Just to soften the edges off. And there we go. So that's number two. So number two is a bit better than number one. So let's go for number three. We'll do one more just to uh, really get a bit more practice in. So let's go a little bit bluer in this one. So I'm gonna put a bit of French ultramarine in there. Just the same figure. I'm just going to do it next to him. Might go a little bit more to the right to give myself room for the shadow. So again, starting with the head. Don't always have to start with the head. You could start with the feet if you wanted to, but um, I'm trying to keep them relatively similarly sized. So um, yeah, I'll just do it the same way each time. Keep the process the same. So coming down the back, 
So then we've got the chin that's going to be there somewhere. Coat, a little bit goes out and then back in again. That's about his waist. So we come down to the leg, foot. So his foot's in there somewhere. His knee creates that little triangle shape. Another foot, back of the leg, and then there's his body there. Okay, so now this time, slightly different, I'm going to add a bit of red, a little bit of cadmium at the top of the, in the sort of hat and face area. So it's not too dissimilar to the first one, a uh, second one, sorry. Just a bit redder. And then as I come down the body, I'm going to go a lot bluer. Let's bring that out a little bit more there. And then dip into some more blue, <clears throat> more ultramarine coming down, make this one a bit stronger, I think. And there's the back of the backpack coming down, all the way down to the legs. Same thing. Just let the legs merge down to the foot. And the other foot. And then again, the shadow. So this shadow will take it a bit more, uh, a little bit steeper so that we can get the next thing in afterwards comes across, there's the bit of shadow for the other foot. <clears throat> then we've got the backpack. And then elongated for where the head is. <clears throat> like so. Okay, I'm just gonna soften that off. <clears throat> Alrighty, so let me give you five minutes or so, just have a go at those quickly. And then around it, we're going to add a few little smaller figures and try and get those roughly in perspective to this bigger figure. And then we'll put some shadows on those. And then we'll do a separate entity with um, uh, some buildings. And then we'll try and put this figure in with the buildings. So again, I'm just going to use a very similar, um, I'm just going to use the same mix as I used before. So I'm just going to place them sort of randomly in the background as a little bit of practice. So thinking about them being on the same flat level as these figures, then they're going to shrink, the legs will come up, the heads will come down a little bit, but there'll be a long, let's just draw a line in. So the heads will come roughly, well actually in the photo, they come a little bit lower than that, coming sort of through the backpack height. So the heads are about that high. And the feet in the small ones in the distance will be about that high. Okay, so if we think about putting some little figures within that sort of space, then we should be fine. So first little figure then, let's go for it. So I'm going to do a sort of an oblong with a fatter bottom. So wider at the bottom than it is at the top. Not putting a head on it just yet. And then I just offer that shape, bring a little um, sort of v-shape quite thin don't make them too long and then just off of that i'm going to bring a flat line because obviously that's where the shadow is going to come is a flat line and then a little tiny little head not too big on top so let's do that again so we have a sort of a rectangle with a wider bottom Obviously, depending on the, um, the angle of that uh, rectangle will define the angle of the figure. Some little verticals coming off of that. Then we have a flat line 
coming at the same angle as these lines. Otherwise, if it goes at a different um, direction, so if you were taking these shadow lines or this flat line going to the right, they wouldn't fit with the figures that we've already done. So they need to be going towards the left. And then again, another little, another little head on top. So let's have another little go at that one. So perhaps we'll have another little figure in the background. So again, another little rectangle shape with a slightly wider bottom than top. Some verticals coming down. And then a little dot on top for the head. And then we've got the we've got the line for the the shadow kind of going across. Let's try a different colour one. Let's go a bit browner. <clears throat> Let's do some over here now. So now I'm going to do one that's slightly bigger. So to bring them forwards, all we do is we go slightly larger than these lines. So over here, I'm going to bring a figure that's coming towards us. So again, the big box. And because they're slightly closer, we might even get an indication of the arms now. They're wider at the bottom. Legs tend to converge inwards as the person's walking towards us. And then we get a sort of head shape on top. He's got very wide shoulders. Let's make the next one a bit narrower. He's a bit wide. So let's go for one here. So again, a box. Let's make it a bit different shape to the first one. Legs come down. And again, head. And perhaps we can give this one an arm as well. And oh, sorry, I forgot the shadow as well. So let's put the shadow in. Coming across. And again, shadow coming across. Okay, a couple more of those just to practice. So let's have one just overlapping the back of this figure here. So let's bring it in as though it's coming from behind this figure. So we have a box again, a little bit bigger because it's going to be closer. Wider at the bottom. So some legs kind of coming down. Don't have to go right the way to the ground. You can just kind of let them fade out. And then a bit of a head. The head is actually fairly small. Don't make the head too big. And then again, we can have the shadow that disappears behind this figure that's in front of it. <clears throat> okay, let's go bigger again then. So we're gonna go even larger again. So all I'm doing is just expanding the figures to make them bigger as they come towards us. So now let's go with a bigger figure here. So I'm going to start to round the box. So instead of it being so straight, I'm going to give it a bit of curvature to the to this box. So back here we don't need to worry so much, but now as they start to get closer to us, we want a bit more um, variation in the in that box shape. Perhaps we can give this one a bit of a bent leg. Give him an arm. Make that leg a bit wider. Again, the head is not so big. Give it a bit of a tilt. And then we've got the shadow, which also will have a slightly more angle to it. Not much, just a bit more angle. And let's go up a bigger one over here. So again, bit of curvature. Now I want this figure to sort of lean to the right a little bit. So I'm gonna draw my box so that this shoulder of the figure is gonna be lower than the shoulder on that side. Again, give it, a, give it a bit of shape, give it some legs. So perhaps this one's a bit wobbly on his feet. And then the head will counterbalance the head by going the other way. And maybe they're lifting a heavy bag. There we go. And again, a little bit of shadow. 
coming up behind the first figure. Okay, just very, very light color. I'm not gonna make it too dark. So in the same way we did the initial um, figure sketches, you might just wanna do this first of all and then dry this off before you put your initial wash on. Or you could do this in pencil if you're not if you're not one hundred percent confident. So let's have our main figure sort of in this area, and the shadow is going to go out of the corner of the picture <clears throat> somewhere here. So I'm going to make a little mark where the top of the figure is going to come, a little mark where the feet are going to come. So that's about the size of our main our main figure. So at the back of that, we're going to have the um, the church, which is going to come up right to the very, very top, like we just had. And that's gonna kind of come down. I'm not gonna fill it in just yet. I'm just gonna draw the shape. So we kind of got the church in there and we've got the tower kind of coming down. And that comes right the way down and it sort of kicks out, comes back down on itself. Let's keep it simple like we did the, uh, um, the initial study. I don't want to get too, too fiddly with this. And then our main figure is going to come, so thinking back to what we did earlier on when we did the little drawings. So just putting in a, in a shape. So then we've got the head, we've got the neck, or the hood rather. Then you've got the backpack coming down. We've got the front of the body coming down. And then all the way down to the leg and the foot. Which is gonna be in there somewhere, coming up. And then we've got the other leg. And then you've got the back like so. So that's fine. And then we've got the other building, which is gonna come here. So let's bring all this down a tiny bit more. So that's our building. Comes down. And then it goes out of the picture. We've got our left hand building, which comes there. And then you've got this vertical that goes all the way up. I've moved it over a little bit because my figure is actually to the left of that, but never mind. This comes out. And then we're into the roof line. And then we've got internal shapes, which I'm not going to put in. Just going to keep it really simple. Bottom of the building, sort of in there somewhere. And then we've got the pavement, sort of coming down the hill and out of the picture. And then we've actually got some cars and things over here. I think we'll ignore those and we'll just put in some of the little figures when we get to it. One will be in there, a couple back there. Bit of pavement here. Okay, that's it. Right, so let's dry that off <clears throat> and put our first wash on. So I'm going to clean up this colour a little bit. It's a bit dirty now, so let's get rid of that. <clears throat> let's start with some cleaner colour. A bit of water in there. We'll take a bit of cerulean blue. And a tiny bit of uh, like a light red. Give me a gray. Okay, there we go, there's my gray. 
and then we should be good to go to start to load up load up our paper so a bit of water in there tilt the board and then I'm going to load up the top Exactly the same as we did in that ever exercise. And then start to bring this down over the top of the sketch. Keep it going. Keep it coming down. even go over our figure because like we said it's going to be darker I put a bit more brown in that now or a little bit more of that light red and the blue together go a bit stronger Just through this sort of middle section. Coming down the base of the buildings. Can bring a bit of that up into the, the buildings there. And then I'm gonna wash it out. So then just plenty of clean water. And then I'm just gonna wash out the bottom section and just let it run down. Okay, there we go. Lay that flat and I can let that dry. So I'm going to use um, some more of the cerulean into that mix. Not too thick because obviously I want it to be a little bit further away, a bit more distant. So taking this um, washy-ish mix. I'm going to start to fill in my tower shape or spire shape I should say. Keep it nice and thin at the top and as we come down it can get a bit thicker. All the way down onto the roof line. It sort of kicks out, like we said at the bottom. And then we'll go to a bigger brush. So start to bring that whole big shape all the way down. Down the uh, tower. Trying to keep it nice and simple like I did the, uh, the browner version. The only difference being here is that when we get to um our figure i'm going to start to cut around around the shape of the figure just to give it a bit more definition when we paint into that otherwise it get, might get a bit lost <clears throat> so touch more cerulean a bit more of the light red For the bottom area just to darken it up again a bit more and now as I get down here I'm actually going to use the same color exactly the same color to put my little figures that are in the distance in because they're all roughly at the same point I'm just going to start off by doing my little box a couple of legs just some little verticals and a tiny little head Um, obviously, there's no point doing one over the top of that wet wash. But what I can do is pull out my shadow there. I could actually bring one down here. Just bring a shape. It would just look like it's disappearing into the into the mass of that larger dark area. And then I can start to fill in my building on the right now, using the same colour. Let's get the apex in. 
in exactly the same way as we did the, uh, as I said, the browner version. So coming down, we need a bit more of that color. As I get about halfway, I'm then going to just put a bit more color into it, more red, more cerulean. and then start to bring that into the shape all the way down till we get to the road and then just leave some odd breaks in that larger piece of color for when we bring the figures in I'm not going to worry about the cars and then let's do the building on the left same thing Cerulean, the red, get the roof line in. So remember it's quite steep up here. Coming down. This one could be a bit darker because obviously it's it's in more shadow. Just straighten that line up a bit more. Coming all the way down. Might even indicate where that roof line is there as well. And this comes down to the road. I'm going to go more red now as I come to the bottom. Just to darken it up a bit. Just straighten up that edge. Perhaps there's a sign there or something. Let's put a sign in. Let's break it up a bit. Coming all the way down, and then we're at the road height. Where we've got this sort of shadow being cast across the road. And then that then comes back through the pavement and then away into the distance. Go in there, because I don't want it to be too purple to knock the purpleness down a bit. Okay, taking that now dark color, I'm gonna block in the silhouette of the figure. So we've got the shape of the head, got the hat, the body coming down, backpack. <clears throat> Coming all the way down, a bit more cerulean, just as we come down to the legs. All the way down, and then like we did when we did our little um, practice ones, we need to put the shadow in, connecting it to our main figure and the shadow is going to come this way towards the corner of the picture. So there's the other foot and then it kind of comes around and then it goes right the way out. Like so, a bit fatter there. And then we can just soften, soften off this as we're coming away into the distance. Just watch the edges a little bit so they're not too sharp. Okay. And then I can dry that off down into that mix. So let's start off with these ones back here. So we already um, started to put these in. So a little bit bigger, tiny little head, bring the leg down. Um, we've got a bigger one that's gonna come in here. So here's the body and the legs kind of coming down. 
the ground, shadow, head. Oh, it's got, he's obviously got a hat on now. Um, <laughs> the head went a bit large, never mind. Uh, let's have another figure to, about this high. She's helping out that woman on the ladder. So she's looking up or looking down, whichever way you want to look at it. And maybe give her a friend. Obviously in the shadow, you don't get so much of a car shadow. So these are what's called car shadows, but in the shadow, the figure um, will just be dark. You don't need to worry about giving it a directional shadow. So for example, like here, where we've got this one on the right, this figure's just dark. You don't need to worry about um, giving it a, uh, a shadow coming off of the actual main figure. You only need to worry about that when you've got direct sunlight, uh, you know, around the figure or in or near the figure. Okay, so keeping it really, really simple. And then obviously we've just put in some, like we did on the first little sketch, just a few little indications of the architectural structures. I don't want to get too fiddly with all of this. I wanted to just keep this as a fairly simple exercise. So I'm just going to put in a few little windows in my buildings. Um, just to sort of break up this larger mass of shape. But again, really, really simple. Um, A few little dots and dabs here and there just to indicate some windows and some internal structures. A little bit of a window up here. Put the odd line. Uh, we can have the odd bit of wire and whatnot kind of crossing the road. Oops, maybe that shouldn't have gone across his head, never mind. Just wipe that off. The odd oh, slit of a window on this vertical building. So these will be very narrow windows. Remember, don't make them too wide because the building is in perspective. Just the odd vertical here and there. Um, Nothing too complicated on that left. And just maybe the indication of the pavement. And I think that will do this one. Okay, so let's have a quick go. And this will be a quick go at the idea of this shadow being cast across this snow track. So because this is watercolour, obviously we can't use white, or well we can use white, but we, we don't ideally want to use white. But what we do want to do is give the impression that the, <clears throat> the shadows are going over the form. So the form being the, um, the, the fact that some of the snow has been depressed and some of the snow is like in a bank or higher up. So the first thing I'll do then is a very, very simple tree line really, really simple um, up in the distance. So I'm just gonna put some water down. <clears throat> so I'm gonna paint a water shape, it kind of comes down to a little V shape here. There's gonna be a gap there. And then another sort of bank of trees. Oops, got hair in that. Um, coming down from the right hand side. And then it's gonna have a little bit of angle at the bottom, just because I wanna give us the idea of some distance. And that's enough. Take some, um, some colors now, a bit of green, so a bit of Viridian. 
Let me clean up this palette because that's filthy. So just some simple color mixes, so a bit of green, a bit of yellow. Just to start off my tree color. A bit of a uh, Payne's gray in that. There we are. This will be my lighter tree colors. Tip the board away so that the trees are going up and I'm just gonna start to drop this into that wet area all the way through. And again, trying to keep this relatively simple. Don't want to overcomplicate this. More Payne's Gray. Bit more. <clears throat> Bit darker at the bottoms of the trees. It's come a bit higher there. where my gap in the trees we can go a bit darker okay we'll just let that tip and move get that to run a bit more so i'm just going to spray out that top edge A little bit more colour in there. Paint's grey. Just to darken it up over here, because obviously we want the the whites to be the strongest strongest colours of the snow. Just let that tip a bit more. Okay, so I'm just going to suck up now the excess just with a damp, damp brush, just along this bottom edge. And then I'm gonna to start to bring some blues in for where the, um, the snow track is coming. <sighs> so let's just get rid of that excess. Okay. Okay. So now I can start to bring some of the ultramarine. Nice clean bit of ultramarine. Bring some of that in at the bottom of the tree line. And then we can have some of that over here. Some lovely um, burnt siennas and things in there as well, which is quite nice. Now, so I need to draw with this ultramarine because this is going to be my shadow color. So the shadows are coming across the picture. Then we're going to have sort of a dip where the track is going to come. So if I just give you an indication where the track is. Very light bit of brown, a uh, bit of blue. So the track is sort of coming away from the distance and then it's sort of meandering all the way through and down. And then it's coming all the way through. That's going to be a bigger shadow and out of the picture there. Okay. So as we come across from left to right, when I hit the edge of that track to give the idea that it's um, a valley or going down, I need to then change the angle of the brush stroke to go down. Then it goes across then it can come back up on the other side and then go across again. And that's what gives the idea that that's a, um, a sunken area within the, within the picture. So let's do that again. So we come across, we dip it down, go across, like so. A bit more blue. So as I'm coming closer, the shadow is coming across 
you know you can even undulate it if you want to give the idea that the snow is a little bit more of a different shape even in that area then we go across the bottom of the the track and then we start to come back up the other side so let's fill all this in because this is actually shadow all shadow along there remembering to keep the, some of the whites because obviously that's our snow we don't want to lose that as it comes out of that large area of shadow it then becomes a line again so when it goes into an area of shadow itself it disappears it just becomes part of the larger mass of the whatever the shadow it's gone into it's only then when it becomes an independent shape again do we then start to worry about it doing all of this line type stuff so then it comes out like so. We can do another one over here. Coming up, perhaps it comes up and over. Get to the edge of the bank, it comes down. So it comes down, it goes across the bottom of the track. Hits the big shadow, loses and loses. We, we lose it. So the line no longer becomes a line. And as we come out the other side of the shadow, that bank shadow, it then becomes a line again. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Let's just do one more. So we're coming across. So to come, because we're going across the, the flatter area of snow, we can see the actual shape of the shadow as we get into that um larger bank of shadow the line no longer is visible it just becomes part of that larger mass unless we get the condition where you see here is a massive color then we get a light patch so then the line does come back again okay so you do get the line showing up again and then it comes out and then we're back into the line again as we come out of the um, that larger mass of shadow. So it's a very, very simple little exercise. That's all I really wanted to do was just to give that kind of concept about why certain shadow conditions happen. So this happens because we've got a tree on the left hand side here. Sun is behind it. The light is shining past the tree, causing this to be a cast shadow i.e. the light is not hitting that part of the snow. In some of these um, shadows, I don't know if you can see in the actual reference, but there are lighter patches within the larger area of shadow, like on this bank, and that's called, car that's called um, reflected light. So there'll be light from the, the base of the track that's bouncing up into the shadow, which is causing some of it to be lighter than other parts. Um, and that's why you get that condition as well. But generally speaking, we get this line condition that follows the form so if it comes across then if the light the, the ground drops then the shadow drops goes across and then the, the, the land goes back up again it goes back and follows the form that's why it's not just a dead straight line if it was a flat piece of road then yes it would just be a dead even straight line all the way across 